Iboga. Iboga. One of those. Hi everyone, thanks for checking out our video. My name is Jared Laidlaw, co-founder of Allo Digital, and we help events sell out their shows uh, with Facebook and Google advertising. And part of advertising online is being able to track uh, the performance of, of the campaigns and making sure you understand where your marketing dollars are best spent. Uh, whether that's on Facebook, whether that's on Google, whether that's on YouTube or the display network, on search network, you know, understanding what is actually working for your business. So you can optimize there, put more budget into Facebook or into YouTube ads if that's actually what's bringing uh, your attendees to your show. And that leads us to the topic of this video, cross-domain tracking from your website to Eventbrite. Now Eventbrite is amazing. It's a great platform. Uh, their fees may be a little bit high for some event planners, uh, but ultimately the integration with Facebook uh, and their robust system, uh, I believe is a really good option uh, for events out there. Now one problem with having a website and then sending uh, your potential attendees off to a ticket merchant is making sure that you can track that movement in your analytics and in your campaigns so that like I said you can allocate your budget and your marketing spend to the correct areas right so that's where we jump in with cross domain tracking what you're going to need here is a website obviously uh, an Eventbrite page and then also a Google Tag Manager so Google Tag Manager is a really really important tool um, it's really helpful makes things a lot easier uh, when implementing stuff like event tracking uh, things like pixel codes and whatnot. So getting a Google Tag Manager account is very important. Now this video is based on a blog post done by the team over at One Further. Uh, so I think they're a data and analytics firm. Uh, and this is a blog post from January 5th in 2017. And it's actually what I use to implement cross-domain tracking for one of our clients. Now the video is going to closely follow the blog. Um, there is a couple uh, little um, aspects that aren't included in the blog and it will described out, so we're going to add that uh, to the video as well. So I'll link to the blog uh, in the description below, so make sure you check that out. Uh, it's going to have all the codes that you need to implement there. So check out One Further as well because i got some great stuff going on over there. So thanks to the team at One Further for uh, helping solve my problem and, and having this video based on their article here. And the reason why I'm uh, creating this video is I'm a video learner. I like uh, to go on YouTube and any problems I have, be able to follow step by step uh, with someone who's already done that. So if you're a video person like me, hopefully you find this, this valuable and you can set up cross-domain tracking for yourself. Uh, if you learn uh, via blogs, then definitely click the link in the description below. Uh, you'll be taken to this page here uh, so you can uh, follow along their guide. Anyway, let's jump into it. So like I mentioned earlier, the issue with sending people from your website to a ticket merchant is making sure that you're connecting the dots okay so making sure that you're following people from the website to the uh to the eventbrite page or Ticketmaster or you know whatever merchant that you're using uh, and making sure that you can see that because if you don't have cross domain tracking installed correctly what you're going to end up seeing is people on your website they turn up and if you have analytics installed you can see how they're entering your website but then once they go, once they click through to your ticket page, where you're usually going to have, uh, let's say, an event page on your website, buy tickets, click here, and then they're going to be sent to your, your event right page. What you're going to see in analytics is a lot of direct traffic. So what that means is if you have analytics installed onto your event right page, Google Analytics is going to track them as coming directly to the web URL and not actually from however they entered your website. So that's what cross-domain tracking does. It takes the data from how, to, how people arrived on your website and keeps that data together with that customer or with that uh, visitor when they enter your Eventbrite page and ultimately convert or not convert. So you can see, hey, everyone from this Facebook campaign ends up on my website, then clicks through to Eventbrite, but none of them actually purchase. But the other people from the Google campaign, they actually convert. So why don't we put more money into Google or fix the problems with the Facebook uh, Facebook audience? And that's what we were seeing with our client. They were getting a lot of direct traffic to their Eventbrite page, but we weren't actually able to see where those people were coming from initially. 
So a lot of the traffic to the Eventbrite page was coming from the website, but we weren't seeing how they were landing on the website. And we had Facebook campaigns, we have Google campaigns running. So we really wanted to see that data along with the ultimate end conversion. So this is what we did. So we followed along this great blog post here by One Further. Nice to mention them again. And so this is one of our, our client's events. When we click on free tickets, what we're going to install today is going to end up with a little parameter being added up the top there. A little parameter being added in to the URL when someone clicks on that. And that parameter is the ID behind uh, my browser as a user. And not to get too technical, but that's essentially how we tell analytics that this person is the same person as what was on the website. So now we're, we're connecting those dots, we can see the ultimate customer journey. So let's get into how we actually do that. So if you want to bring up your Google Tag Manager account, along with the one further blog post that's linked below, okay? So you're going to have them on two. So we're going to go side by side here. So the first thing we're going to do is open up and create a new variable. So click on variables in the left. We're going to create new variable here. And we're just going to follow along with them. Custom JS Tracker. And we're going to call that a custom JavaScript. That's the variable type. Then going to go back and grab the code here. Copy that and paste it in that section. Then you're going to hit save in the top right. Now the little slip up uh, that is in this blog post is actually uh, this section here. So within this code, uh, we need to we need to do one more step, um, which isn't necessarily explained here, but you need to create a constant variable that's going to pull through your analytics account and enable this code to pick up the, your ID. So here's how we do that. You're going to go into variable, we're going to create another variable. And this one is going to be called a constant variable. Okay, so you click into here, and we're going to scroll down, it's going to be called a constant variable. Now it's important now it's important here to make sure you are following um, with this blog post. Make sure you are naming things the same way, because we are we are referencing these. We are referencing within that code that we just within that variable. I should say we just created uh, this other variable here. Okay, so you're going to call it GA tracking ID. It's a constant variable, and in this value section, you're going to go into your analytics account and you're going to grab your, uh, your universal analytics ID and paste it in here. So it should look like something like UA uh, la 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 dot one, something like that. Okay, so you're going to go into analytics and grab that. And the way you do that, so if we open the analytics account, and uh, it's going to be blurred here a little bit. So you can either you can either click on the the top menu and you're going to grab that number in your property. So you should be uh, looking at the properties and apps. Uh, you should be able to grab that number there. Or if you open up the admin and click on tracking info in the property area and then click on tracking code you'll be able to see the tracking id again in that area there so multiple ways on getting that tracking id so you want to copy and paste that id into the value of the constant variable okay very important this part so now that we've created a way to grab that id now we're going to make sure that we can send that id through to eventbrite when someone clicks on the page and this is how we do it so you want to create a custom html tag and call it custom HTML, add client ID to Eventbrite link. So follow this, following along with the blog here. So go into your tag manager, click on the left-hand side, and click on tags. I'm gonna create a new tag and make sure you're calling that uh, the same, the same uh, naming conventions as in the, uh, in the blog post as well. Tag configuration is custom HTML. Here we go, click that. And in the HTML block, we're just going to grab this code, copy paste it, and add it in here. Now, what you need to do here is add into the variable domain up here the Eventbrite uh, domain that you that you're using. 
So for our client, it was .com.au. Okay, .com. Oh. .au. Uh, if you're in the UK, you might have .co.uk or .co.nz. If you're in New Zealand, um, and if you're just using Eventbrite.com, then add that in there. Okay. So what this is telling, uh, that what what this code is kind of doing now is saying any links that go to this website, make sure you add down here. Make sure that you add these parameters. So this this little question mark, uh, Eboga. Um, I think I'm saying that correctly. That's a little that's that's Eventbrite's way of cross domain tracking. And then this little bit here is grabbing that other variable that we've created and putting the ID there. So essentially you're going to end up having, whenever a link is clicked, Google Tag Manager will insert this Eboga, Eboga, one of those, uh, along with the client ID, then we're going to, that's going to set up the cross domain tracking. So next we need to set up a trigger to tell Google Tag Manager when to fire this event off. Open up triggering here and create a new trigger up on the top right and and following along I'm going to go GTM load is the name and it's going to be a custom event trigger. Find that custom event there we go an event name again call it GTM load fire the trigger on all custom events great and then hit save okay so now that you've saved that you should have your custom HTML code there your trigger to telling GTM when to run that now you hit save in the top here and then we're going to submit changes Click on submit at the top and we're going to publish that skip that we don't need to worry about that and then we're done awesome now you need to test out to make sure that what we've set up has done been done so correctly and we do that by going you want to go over to your web page where your uh, google tag manager code should be running now and click on whatever uh, call to action button that you have and you should be taken to your Eventbrite page and you should see that little uh, question mark underscore eboga and the client ID in the URL and that's it now once you start going into your Google Analytics account you're going to be able to see that entire customer process uh, that customer journey from landing on your website from your posters or your messenger campaigns, uh, YouTube ads, Facebook, those kind of channels, and the journey to your website, to your Eventbrite page, and ultimately uh, to purchase. So hopefully that's been helpful. Remember to follow along with the blog post here. Uh, so that's one further that is in the description below. You can click straight to that. The codes will be there. I'll also upload the codes to uh, another website which will have them just in case anything happens to this uh, blog post here and we'll also uh, look to put something up on our blog as well just in case uh, one further uh, makes any changes or, or anything happens on that side of things. They also have an additional section here setting up Google Analytics to track revenue on Eventbrite uh, and that's super easy as well. Uh, it's just a, a matter of adding your analytics account to Eventbrite and then making sure you enable e-commerce uh, in the back end on your uh, of your analytics account and you know that's that's super easy as well that takes 30 seconds so I definitely uh, encourage everyone to get that installed as well so I hope that's been helpful now that you guys have cross domain tracking installed you're going to be able to see where your best traffic sources are uh, that leads to ticket conversions, uh, which is you know ultimately what you want to see from your event marketing. You want to see people come from Facebook or come from Instagram and then buy a ticket or register for a ticket. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or any concerns, if, if it's not working for you, make sure you double check the video, go back and make sure everything's, uh, all your T's and are crossed and I's are dotted. 
Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely reach out and help out as much as I can. All right, thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. See ya.